So what about gay people, say, within the Assemblies of, the ch assemblies of God Church? I mean, have they got a place there? I'm the first openly gay Pentecostal in Australia. Um, really? Yeah. So um, I, I'm out there. Um, I have I have no I have nothing to be ashamed of. I live uh, I live a moral life. You know I have my relationship with God, um, and I know who I am. So I have no fear about declaring my sexual orientation within the churches. I know a number of gay and lesbian people, but at this stage they're fearful about actually declaring who they are. Do you think there will be a change in a few years? Oh yes, and there will be quite a dramatic change. That's inevitable. It, it is inevitable. What, what is inevitable is, is that they will, uh, the church will eventually realise that they got it wrong about homosexuality as they have about a number of things, and women, for example, slavery. You know, we can go back through church history and see how the church actually, you know, for times supported oppression. So they will realise, so it's inevitable. What we need to look at is how do we manage the transition with the least amount of damage? Because I could tomorrow cause a split within a denomination with the information that I have and with pushing the agenda, etc, etc. But that's not the way to work because too many people will be hurt. This change will happen gradually, but what we would like to do is see it um, speed up a little bit. So what you're saying, if you wanted to, you could probably harm the church, but you think it's better that you work together, the gay community, gay, lesbian, transgendered, bisexual community, works with the church for change as opposed to against? I think, you know, the way I, looking back, and you know, mm. I'm not sure if you're new to all this stuff, what I mm. see is that the gay activist is on one side <laughs> and the church has been on the other. So the bell rings and they come out fighting, often in the media. You know, they never actually meet. What, what I'm trying to create is uh, an informed, intelligent, respectful dialogue about the issues of same-sex orientation. So what I invite people to do is to meet for coffee, sit down over a meal and have a chat, you know, and talk. And I, I'll tell them my story, you know, and, and people know that I, I'm not militant, you know, they know that I'm not aggressive, that I'm not, you know, this angry gay act activist, that I like to think of myself more as a gay ambassador, that I love the privilege of representing my community and breaking down those walls. What advice have you got for young gay Pentecostal Christians? That's a great question. Advice? First of all, I would like to encourage you <laughs> and say to you, you are no longer alone. Many of us lived in, in terrible isolation and fear. So you need no longer be alone. There's a forum like our for forum, which is Freedom to Be, www.freedom with a number two letter B dot org. If you go there, you can go on our forum. Um, and so you're not alone, but the advice that I would give you is educate yourself. Educate yourself so you can speak intelligently. That you educate yourself in regard to the, sexual or the research on sexual orientation educate yourself about those six particular Bible verses. There's so much stuff there on the net today. And if you are informed, then when someone criticizes or condemns or anything like that, you have an intelligent, informed answer. Well, you've recently been named as one of the 25 most influential Australians. Mm -hmm. How does that feel? That was an amazing honor, you know, because, um, you know, we do, anyone within the community which is, is trying to bring about change, we do what we do because it's really important work. And that acknowledgement is, is just really wonderful. That's brilliant. And a couple more questions. What is your relationship with the church like now? My relationship with the church now is, is good. You know, I, um, there are some people who won't speak to me. Um, that's their problem. I don't need to speak to them because they don't want to speak to me. But, they, you know, um, there are people that, that, that I do get along well with. I go to a home group on a regular basis. Um, I, no one's ever been nasty or aggressive towards me. Um, no one's ever told me I should leave. No one's ever told me I can't be a Christian and be gay, you know. So, you know, um, I, I haven't had one negative reaction, really. Well, your reaction's been a positive one. I mean, I, I've met gay people, gay Christians who have left the church because they haven't felt comfortable. But yours is comforting and reassuring to hear 
that for some people there is still a place for them that they can still be within that church mm. so would you would you say there is definitely a safe place for many gay people no i wouldn't say there is in, in some denominations there is a safe place um i i, I would err on the uh, other side of caution for some people i guess what i would like to say william is that um i feel very strongly that this is a part of my role in life um, and that I know that I am going to uh, have more impact inside the city walls, talking to people, than being outside the city walls shouting. Working from the inside for change. Yeah, yeah. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Um, yes, I think that I'd like to add, you know, that my hero is Rosa Parks. She was the black American rights activist. She, on the way home from work at the factory, she was very tired. And that was the time of segregation and the blacks had to sit in the back of the bus. And that seat was needed for a white person. The bus driver told her to get up and she said no. And that one act by that one very, very ordinary woman ignited the civil rights movement. And that's why all it takes is one person and that one person could be you. Well, at the moment it seems to be you, doesn't it? And you seem to be doing a pretty good job sort of educating people, giving them a safe place within the church and also a home with your group, uh, Freedom To Be, for gay Christians and their admirers, I guess you could say. Yeah, supporters. Well, thanks. Anthony Van Brown, thanks for your time. Thank thanks you. William.